So bless me and welcome on one of the best defenders in the entire country and now the newest member of Auburn, Zepp Jasper. How are you doing, man? I'm doing all right, man. How are you doing? Pretty good. Well, take us through this. It's been a kind of a crazy process. You enter the transfer portal and you're never committing even sooner than you originally intended for you're going to Auburn. Take us through how excited you are right now. I'm pretty excited. Um, you know, coming in, you know, I'm coming in looking to, you know, do good things at Auburn. Coming in looking to be a top 25 team in the nation next year. Um, with some pieces getting added on. Um, it's just going to be, you know, a great year next year. Um, um, Bruce Pearl, you know, great coach, um, assistant coaches, the great staff, and I'm just looking forward to, you know, coming to Auburn. And this could be a very deep team. Obviously, we know a lot of moves could still be happening, but we have potential Sharif coming back, which will probably be one of the best point guards in the entire country next year, alongside the likes of, obviously, Jalen. Pretty much the entire team could return. You're adding also, obviously, a top five player in the country, Jabari, Trey, like, how special can this team be? Um, this can be a very deep team. Uh, you know, we got a lot of pieces. You know, um, I think this team can be, you know, more wiser, more older. Mm -hmm. um, I think they went, a lot of, went against a lot of adversity last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, adding the right pieces this year, we can be, you know, a Final Four type team, a championship type team. You know, we can be a scary team, you know, that hit the market um, next year in college basketball. Um, I think with everybody coming back, you know, and if, and if Sharif come back, you know, um, I think we can be a great team. You know, um, you know, um, I think we, we have to work on one thing, and that would be defense. But, you know, this next year, you know, I think things would go well if we had the same team. That is one of the biggest things you bring. Obviously, you went off last year scoring, but your kind of your biggest thing you've been bringing into college since you got out here has been the defensive game. You even have the nickname Honey Badger. Take us through how you plan to bring that to Auburn. Um, well, I just say I, I just – plan on being a leader and um setting the tone as soon as I get to Auburn. Um defense is my, you know, my motive. And um I just want to bring that to Auburn, you know, show the fans why they call me Honey Badger and show show people why I'm a defense stopper by guarding the best players, um, doing whatever I gotta do to help my team win. And um this year I want to be a top 10, um, top 10 team and you know, defense coming in next year. Mm -hmm. Take us to that nickname. How'd you first get that? Like when did that nickname first start? Uh, when that nickname first started, um, my fresh freshman year, you know, at the College of Charleston, um, you know, by guarding the best player, um, guarding the team's best player by harassing them, always nagging them on defense, going up to them, you know, pressuring the ball, making sure he get a ball up, making, letting them know I'm fearless, letting them know like it's gonna be a long night. On the defensive end, obviously it's kind of skill, but a lot of it's just a lot of heart, it's a lot of passion. You have to play with that. It's kind of the mentality you have to have. When did you first start getting that? Have you always had that defensive knack for you or did that kind of come on later on in life? Like, when did you first start really be having that defensive presence? Um, when I first got a defensive presence, I probably would say my 10th grade year of high school. Mm -hmm. um, I had a coach named Buck Harris. Um, he was a defense-minded coach. And um, we always would go against great teams. And, you know, he would teach on defense and, I would see the best players score all these points on other teams. So I would just watch them and watch how they do, watch what they do, watch how they shoot, watch how they drive, watch how they go left, watch how they go right. And I would just study their games and I would tell myself, I'm going to make sure, you know, my opponent gets such and such amount of points. And each game I would go into it and, and just lock in on that man and make sure he don't get nothing. Like I said earlier, there could be a lot of change that happens to this roster, and we don't really know. Obviously, you have time to work your way into the team. But at this point in time, like, where do you kind of see yourself fitting in? What's Coach Pearl expect for you? Like, what does he want you role-wise? What's what going to bring the team? Like, what does he kind of expect for you in your first season out there? Um, my first season, I think he's going to expect leadership. Um, me being an older guy, me being in college basketball already, um, them being a younger team, you know, in the nation. Mm -hmm. Well, they was the youngest team in the nation this year. Um, I think I'm going to bring, you know, some veteran – veteran leadership to the team this year you know like I say by just you know by just adding defense adding offense and just you know I know those guys grind but it's just gonna be a, a different type of you know grind when I come in you know I'm just gonna try to get those guys to just lock in as, as much as possible and just try to do as much as possible on the defensive end because it seemed like sometimes they was good on defense but can do offense sometimes it's good on offense but can do defense so I'm going to try to get those guys, you know, lock in on both and, and just make sure the nation knows that we're, we're coming next year. And BP um, is looking forward to, you know, like he's he's making some some very great offseason moves and 
we're looking we're looking forward to being, like I say, one of the best teams in the nation next year. You may not be able to say all the exact names, but do you think there's still going to be some more moves and more guys going to be joining over in the next couple of weeks or next couple of months? Oh yeah, I think um, I think more people, more some some more major moves, uh, some more players going to be joining Auburn in the next couple of months. That's big time. Now, are you kind of looking into it? Do you think you could be a star next year? Do you think you're be one of the key bench pieces? Like, what kind of role are you looking to have, and what kind of role do you expect to have for yourself next year? Well, um, you know, I'm I'm a player. Whatever comes with my role, I, I'm I'm gonna bring it. No matter how many minutes I play, I'm gonna come with the intensity. Um, I really don't focus on starting. I really don't focus on coming off the bench. Uh, whatever I'm, how I play in practice, that's that's how I you know go along. If I should start or whether I should come off the bench, but either way, um, the way I the way I approach the game, uh, I'm gonna always go hard in practice, and I'm always gonna go hard in the games to to see if I'm um, you know, if I should start or should I come off the bench. But either way, I'm gonna make sure um, I go hard as much and uh, make sure. That I, that I lead and help lead the team as much as I can. Without a doubt. Well, we're going to get back into Auburn a little bit to wrap this up, but I want to go back now to where you're from. You're from Georgia, and that's really where you started creating your brand, kind of became a basketball player. Can I think you through that, though? What's like growing up out there, which is one of the areas really known as more, one of the more basketball talented areas? Um, well, you know, being from Georgia, well, I'm from Augusta, Georgia, but being from Georgia, just the whole state of Georgia, you know, it's, I think we're one of the best states you know, in America of basketball brands and, and who we bring to the table. Um, as you, speaking of Auburn, when you look at the track record, you know, we have a lot of players, you know, um, who are from Georgia. Um, mm -hmm. uh, from the past years, we had Jared Harper. Um, you had Malik Dunbar. Um, you just, you just a lot of players from, from Georgia. But I think Georgia is a tough state to play basketball in. And, you know, growing up, uh, seeing all those you know, those great guys and seeing those those good players and every night you have to bring something new to the table because it's like every everybody have different skills so you know it was kind of hard you know playing against great teams every night but like I said if you you a leader you're a veteran you should always come into the game with a different approach and come into the game of what you're gonna do and making sure you do the right thing in the game. So, you know, those those key aspects and, you know, playing in Georgia, uh, you got to come with it each game because if you don't come with it, you're going to get smacked down. So, mm -hmm. you know, those that's that's the truth about Georgia basketball. Growing up when you're playing out there, obviously, as you said, there's tons of talent out there. Was there one guy, a couple of guys that you really enjoyed playing up against, right? It would be AU, high school games. Like, who are some of those guys you really would love going up against? Um, if I had to say in Georgia, what guys I really love to enjoy going against, I probably would say uh Kobe Simmons, mm. um, uh, hey, uh Kobe Simmons, Jay Harper. You know he went mm. to Auburn, um, played against him. Uh, Rashawn Hammonds, no cross. Um, Jordan Goldwire, no cross. Um, and, and it's a couple more, you know, people out there I can name, but you know, just a lot of a lot of talent uh, in Georgia, and I and I probably didn't get to play everyone, but I wish I did because I love challenges no matter what. But you know, it's just a lot of a lot of dudes who can just play basketball. You just named a lot of big time players out there, and you still walk away winning Play of the Year senior year. You finished up with an eighty four and fifteen record. You could get region title, one thousand career points. Kind of take us through this all. I mean, 84 and 5, not an easy task for anyone, especially in the state of Georgia, to do that. Take us to that record, though. What was it like just coming away winning that many games? Well, you know, coming away winning against um, talented players, it, it was pretty fun. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but each game, like I said, I would go, I would go into the game of having a winning mindset. Mm -hmm. I would go into the game with a, you know, with a serious mentality, uh, you know, a mob mentality approach. Um, being a kid from Augusta, Georgia, you're not being from Atlanta. You know, a lot of kids from Atlanta get, you know, looked at instead of the kids from Augusta, Georgia. So mm -hmm. um, my fellow teammate who just um, – my fellow teammate, Kristen Keelan, who went to North Carolina University, you know, we were going to the games and saying, you know, they need to come to Augusta and look at us. So, you know, each year I would tell myself – my freshman year I would tell myself I need to progress. My sophomore year I wanted to progress. In my junior year, I think I just took my game to another level to show why I'm one of the best players in Georgia and why 
I got one of the best defensive mentalities in Georgia. And then my senior year, I just, you know, it was a different approach. I, I wanted to win a championship. Even though I didn't win a championship, you know, I, I still had a good run, you know, for Georgia basketball. And the crazy part, too, is like you said, you have all these great numbers, all these great accolades. But overall, when you look at the rankings, you look at your overall offers, a lot of people weren't paying attention to you. You still came out about two-star, unranked on a lot of things. Come with some, come up with a good amount of offers, but obviously not no nothing like Auburn at that time. How was that? Did they get put on your shoulder? Like, what was your mentality seeing a lot of people not really give you the attention you probably deserved? Well, um, you know, when I see coaches and uh, I see they wouldn't, you know, give me the attention I ob- observe and uh, things like that, I would ask myself, you know, what am I doing wrong and what do I need to do better? Um, because I would play, you know, certain players and. I would see they had those offers from the schools I wanted. But I would play against those players and, and, and go hard as I can and play defense and do offense and help my team win. But, you know, it was just something about – it was just something about the coaches won't give me the offers, won't give me the chance. So I just used to tell myself, I get one chance. If I get one chance, I'm going to make it happen. And um, like, like I say, being a, a kid from Augusta, Georgia, it, it just take one chance. I'm a hardworking person. And – um. You know, sometimes I'm, I feel very grateful, you know, how things turn out because I just, like I said, I need one, one foot in the door. If I get one foot in the door, I'm going to be grateful for it. I'm going to make sure they remember that one foot in the door. So, you know, growing up, you know, not getting those, getting those looks, it made me hung, hungry, you know, with Coach Grant taking the, you know, the time out to recruit me, you know, going to College of Charleston, you know, I thought that was a great path for me and I'm, I'm grateful that it ended up turning out the way it did because, you know, look where I'm at now. And I think, you know, going to Auburn next year, it's going to be a very great leap for me. But, you know, I'm, I'm ready to show the world, you know, why I'm one of the best defenders in the world, why Auburn going to be one of the best teams in the nation. And I think we're going to make a big leap next year, you know, with them being, you know, with them having, you know, off year, making a tournament and, you know, just, you know, the small things. I, I think we're going to show the world why we're going to be one of the best teams in the nation. At that point in time, was there a school you're looking at? Like, was there a green dream school? Like, when you're growing up, was there a team you love watching that you kind of dreamed to have an offer from? Um, well, my my dream school was Georgia University. Um, mm-hmm. I, I always wanted to be a hometown hero type kid, and uh, Georgia was that that one school I wanted because it's a big fan base in Augusta, Georgia. And I know if I went to Georgia, I know I would have my family, my friends, and just all my supportive people, you know, to come to Georgia games with Georgia being an hour and 40 minutes from Augusta, Georgia. Um, I knew, I knew I wanted that offer, but I never did get the chance to, you know, get that offer. So, you know, it made me hungry in the inside. And I would go against these, you know, these big schools and go against their point guards. And I would realize, like, this, I'm supposed to be on this level. Mm-hmm. I gotta, I gotta show people I'm, I'm not nothing to play with on def- I'm not nothing to play with on defense, offense, and just being a team leader. So when we play those teams, I will make sure their point guard don't get over ten points, or even, or even five points. I will make sure every point they got will be a hard point. Now this is kind of fast forward a little bit again, but obviously this past recruitment process, you have Auburn, you have every school really wanting you on the team. What was the differences, though? What was the difference between coming out of high school or your prep year, looking at those kind of offers and going through that recruiting process as opposed to this past one you just went through? Well, um, the first one went as big as this one. You know, um, the first one I had a couple mid-major offers and uh, got, 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 a, got a bunch of calls. But like I said, it was mid-major. Mm-hmm. Um, but this past recruiting process, you know, I probably would say my phone was, you know, ringing every 30 minutes of, you know, big schools, um, SEC schools, ACC schools, Big Ten, um, Big 12. I had I had so many schools and it was just like, you know, I, I got to pick which school is the best for me. Um, like I said, I was grateful, grateful for the opportunity, you know, with all those schools recruiting me and, and things like that. Were you shocked by how many schools were offering you? Were you expecting to maybe be a little bit more low key, or did you kind of expect to have everyone really wanting you? Um, we're going into the we're going into the portal. I, I expected, you know, a couple. I expected a couple calls, but mm-hmm. I didn't expect that many. You know, 
Uh, but I start realizing, you know, you're a two way player. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people want a two way player. It's a lot of people in college basketball. It's not two way players. Um, when you look at two way players, you look at Davion Mitchell from Baylor. Mm -hmm. um, he's a he's a great two way player. He's one of the best players in the nation to me. Um, if not, he's top five in the nation to me. Um, mm -hmm. I give hats off to him. Uh, but I, I, I expect that because of me being a two way player. Absolutely. Well, let's get into the college career a little bit more deeper. I was your freshman, you go out there and you and you choose Coach Grant, who we know now has moved on to BC and he's an incredible coach. But talk about your guys' bond. Like, how did that grow from the point he started recruiting you up back there when he was at Clemson to obviously right now when you guys decided to go different ways? Um, well, we built a you know a great relationship. Um, I had put my trust into him, you know, with me knowing him for so long, I just knew he would get me to where I need to be. And um you know, we didn't win a championship together, but you know, it was the it, it was fun. You know, mm -hmm. getting getting him to coach me, and you know, he just was a, a great coach to to be around. He just got a great personality. He's a very great dude, humble dude, but he like tough toughness and greediness. Um, that's what I enjoy enjoyed about Coach Grant. Um, and I love that the most. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss those those type of times with him. You know, even though I couldn't go to even though you know, it was planned for me to go to Boston College. I just thought the best fit was for Auburn, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to miss those times, you know, being around Coach Grant and, you know, what we what we built and what type of relationship, you know, we went through. You just said something that's kind of interesting. So that was the original plan. You kind of worked, wanted to go to Boston College with him then? Um, I kind of would have went to Boston College. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, um, Boston College was, is going through a rebuilding phase. Mm -hmm. So – I'm kind of on the phase of, you know, trying to win a national championship. And I think Auburn is the perfect fit, you know, and perfect fit for my style, you know, to try to win a championship. And how about, like I said, how have I got to help Auburn win a championship? I'm going to go out my way to, you know, help Auburn win a championship. Absolutely. Well, going to Boston College real quick, obviously that's a program that's a high major. It's a program that's been struggling now for a long time. It's going to take some, a couple of years probably to get them the, up to peak shape again. But take us through Coach Grant. What will he will do? What can Boston College fans expect for Coach Grant to go out there and do? Like, how much of a coach is he? Oh, Coach Grant, he's I, he's gonna you know come come to Boston College and change the whole program. Um, you know, he's one of those coaches. He's gonna go out there and recruit. He's gonna do whatever he got to do. You know, to get players to come his way. Um, when you talk to Coach Grant, he's a cool guy. He's a guy that. You know, you feel comfortable as soon as you as soon as you get a phone call, as soon as you see him in face. Um, I think he's gonna change Boston College program within one to two years. Um by the time I be looking on TV, I'm I'm expecting him to be a top twenty five team in the nation. Um, he just got that drive and wilderness, you know, to him towards him. Like he he don't wanna lose. So I think he's gonna do whatever in his power to get Boston College to the top again. So they got the right guy then? They got the right guy, no doubt. Without that, well, let's kind of go through your journey a little bit together. That freshman year, you say you go out there, you had to play with a lot of NBA players through your career, which is not the most typical thing when you're talking about being at a mid-major school. You don't really get to play with NBA players too often. As you said, you get to go through three different guys. What was that like? Just what was it like being able to be pushed by those guys, learn from them? Like take us through that aspect of the game. Well, it was it was pretty fun. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing how great those guys was, you know, they always would be in the gym. That's one thing that always stood out to me. Um, you know, Jarrell Brantley, you know, he was a great leader. One of the funnest guys I ever met in my life. Um, he got a great personality. He, he he's, he's always playing around. He's always, you know, joking, laughing around the coaches, around the players, just around people too. Um, but he always, you know, when, when it was time for game time, you know, he always would lace them up and, and tell everybody, let's go. Let's make sure this happened. You know, he was a perfect leader. Grant Riller, you know, I call him the silent assassin. You know, he really didn't talk much. You know, he really didn't say nothing much to the players. He'd tell us, you know, let's go. It's time to, it's time to go. But he was one of those type of guys. Um, he'd get on the court and don't say a word and just lace them up and go to work. Um, but if you made him mad, he's going to draw 40. So... You know, for the opposing team to, you know, talk trash to him, I would see guys talk trash and talk trash to him. He would score 20 points back to back. Um, it was a practice. Um, we had a practice and um he shot like eight shots in a row on me. Um, 
I was guarding him, put my hand straight in his face. He made every every shot in my face, and I was just like, oh, my God. He's just <laughs> killing it right now. I can't do nothing but try to contest, but he hit every shot, you know, um, that I tried to, you know, guard. Absolutely. Well, that freshman year, you guys, you have a bench roll for the majority of the year. You start starting more towards the end of it. You guys overall have a pretty solid year. You guys win 24 games, only nine losses. What was that freshman year like for you? Oh, freshman year was fun. Um, you know, it was it was you know it was a great season. Even though I was looking forward to you know winning you know a, a CAA championship, it didn't turn out how it was supposed to be. But you know, um, like I say, things didn't turn out the way it was supposed to be. But we still was a scary team, you know, to play against. Um, like I say, we had great players, had great role players, and um, it just was a, a fun team to be around. And you know, I always would cherish those moments. Now, before that freshman year, you obviously registered that year before that. Kind of used to that year. Like, what was that like, and how did you improve your game during that time off? Well, you know, being a red shirt that year, uh, I got to I got to learn the small things uh, from the from the system to the plays to schoolwork uh, from shooting. I improved on shooting a lot as soon as I got into College of Charleston. Uh, my three point shot. Um, I think I jacked my three point shot up a, a lot, and um, you know, I had Coach Quentin Farrell, which is at um, Presbyterian now. He was um assistant coach, um, which we still got a special bond um together, and um, I think he improved my game in so many ways. Over that year, how would you say some of the ways you saw help you in your freshman year? Then, because obviously, I know some guys want to go out there and play right away. Obviously, you improve a lot of aspects of your game. Like, how much did that prepare you then for your freshman year and really the rest of your college career so far? Um, well, I got to I got to see, you know, my own eyes and how each game will be a tough game. And um it really opened my eyes and how I would come come in that next year and what I would what I would do and what role I would do, what role I would take. So I would see myself out there and what of what Zeb Jabs can do and what role can he take with having Jarrell Brantley and Grant Rilla right there. So I just would study the game and, you know, watch it and, and, and say, I see myself out there, you know, next year. I see myself helping the team a lot. And then you come out there and you obviously have your junior season. And that's what, really the year you blew up this past year now. 16 points per game, four rebounds, three assists, also a little over steal per game. How did you get to that last year, though? What was like just really taking your game to a whole other level? Um, it was good, you know, taking my game to a whole other, whole another level. Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, I, I seen myself taking my game to a whole another level. Um, I knew coming in this year that I would take it to a level that I, I was supposed to take it to. You know, we're having Grant Rilla gone. We needed somebody to step in and fill the shoes, and I knew it was my time. And I knew – I was going to be a two-way player coming into the year. I would work hard as I could preseason um, from conditioning workouts to basketball workouts. Um, I just would knew that, you know, if I work hard, I knew I would show, you know, the conference and show the world that um, I can I can be one of the best players too. That's like a huge one because you're talking about eight points, you go to 16 points, you go to two to four rebounds, two to three and a half assists, you go one to almost two steals per game. What would led to all that? Like, did you think was that always in you, or did that kind of take through all your work heading that summer? Like, what allowed you to break out and really almost double every single stat? Um, like I say, which I knew, I knew mm-hmm. coming into the year that you know, um, I'm, I, I gotta up my game mm-hmm. from points to assists to rebounds, you know, to to defense. I knew coming into that year that it would be so crucial for me, you know, to, to try to do what I do. And I knew um, I knew that I was going to have the year I was going to have. It was just about me, you know, making sure I locked in and, and making sure I did the small things the right way. Um, because if you don't do the right things the small way, things are not going to work out for you. Things are not going to, you know, go as planned. I didn't go into every game and say, and say, oh, I'm going to score 20 points. I'm going to have five assists. I always went into each game and said, um, I just want to play hard. I just want to win. Um, I never went into went into the game saying, uh, I'm going to score 30. I just I just wanted to win as much as I can. And 
every time I won, even if I scored seven points, um, I still would enjoy, you know, with, with me scoring seven points and my team win, I still would be happy and I still would be cheering on for my teammates. At what point in your career would you say it kind of clicked for you and you started realizing, okay, I can be this elite guy. I can be not just one of the best defensive players in the college basketball, but I can also be a high-level scorer. I truly am that two-way player that can play anywhere in the country. Like, when did that finally click for you? Well, it kind of clicked for me uh, probably would say my sophomore year. Um, my sophomore year, I realized um, I realized that I can I can be one of the best players in the country. I can um, I can also lead. Um, and when I realized that, I, I knew in my head it's gonna be a long year next year. Mm-hmm. And um, whoever stepped in front of me, I, I knew. I just knew they was gonna have a long night, and when they had the ball in front of my face. I knew I was gonna come with the, you know, the authority and the, and the power. And when you talk about last year, I want to open a couple different games you had. One of which was on February twentieth, your career high thirty eight points against Columbus State. Take us to that night. Um, but that game, um, I seen us, you know, we was losing, and and I seen nobody want to step up, so. Going into that game, um, I just told my teammates, just give me the ball. I feel it. I feel it. Once I start feeling it, I just start locking in and telling myself, we're not going to lose this game. I'll do whatever in my power to make us win this game. And I tell my teammates, we can't lose. Just If you got to just give me the ball, just give me the ball. But I knew I was feeling it. I knew I, I had to get the ball so we won't lose was that the highest you ever felt in your college career so far? Uh, I probably would say that's the hottest I've been um, in the game because I only missed five shots and I only went, only shot 18 shots. So, you know, shooting 18 shots to get 38 points and only missing five shots, I, I thought that was an efficient, efficient game. Mm-hmm. Um, very efficient because you don't see many people score 38 points but also be that efficient. So, I think it was one of the best games of my career. And then when you wrap at the end of the year, you have eight straight games, double digits, which obviously is a huge thing, shows that you're consistent. Take us to that last eight games, kind of how you were able to lock in for those games. Um, Well, um, I just would lock in. And like I said, I just would focus and go into games and just be so serious and have a mentality of just, even if we did lose, I just wanted to have that drive to, to really show people that, I come to play each night. Um, I'm lacing my shoes up. I'm putting my shorts on, my jersey on. I'm definitely coming to play. Um, mm-hmm. And um, those, those, that last stretch of eight games, averaging 20.8 um, a game and four assists and 3.2 rebounds, I, I knew I was ready for each each opponent. I would, like I said, I would study each each team and, Ask myself what what spots can I get to, where can I be great at on the court, and um, I realize it can be possible. And uh, once those eight games start, once once I start feeling it, each game I just start feeling it. I, I just start telling my teammates, "Give me the ball. I'm I'm gonna make sure we win." Mm-hmm. Our right, last Charleston thing I want to talk about before I let you go. It's kind of disgusting this whole locker room. Because like you said, you play with a lot of top guys, also just a lot of good college players too. But who is the funniest teammate you've had so far in at your Charleston career? Uh, the funnest, uh, the funniest. Yeah. Uh, um, I probably would say the funnest teammate. Um, I had out of my college career. Um, probably a dude named Samba. Um, Eni. Um, he came off the bench. Um, but I built I built a, a very uh, special relationship with him, and uh, we call uh, and I also had a very good relationship with Drill Brantley. Um, those two guys we also we we called ourselves the Cash Money Crew. <laughs> um, the reason why we call ourselves the Cash Money Crew is because we feel like every time in practice we feel like when we got on a team we was the Cash Money Crew. We feel like we can we can win each time, so we we thought we, we was money. We thought we was we thought we was the boys. And we just would crack jokes, um, make snaps, make Instagrams, or just f- the, the most funniest things, you know, and we just would enjoy it. 
Without a doubt. Well, you can go to the locker room that a lot of the people in the entire country know is going to be one of the more fun locker rooms in the country. Coach Pearl is one of the few coaches going to go in there and dance with you guys, have fun, make jokes. For the entire coaching staff and everyone on that team, how excited you would be a part of that environment? Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great to be a part of that environment. Um, I'm an energetic guy. Um, I love great energy. And uh, the small thing is like that gets me going. Um, mm-hmm. It gets me into one of those modes of I got to give it my all. When I see a coach giving it his all, I got to give it everything I got. Um, you know, just to seeing coaching staff, you know, just show you so much love, you know, coming from a place from a small Augusta, Georgia town, mm-hmm. you just see how grateful things are. And you just want to, you just want to make sure you cherish all those moments and make sure you live up to those expectations, what people expect you to do. So, you know, I think it's going to be a very great environment and, I'm going to, you know, enjoy Bruce Pearl and I'm going to enjoy the coaching staff and I'm going to give it all I got. We're talking a little bit right before we started this and you said about five minutes once you put your name in the portal, they started calling you. What was that first phone call like? It was great because um, I always loved Auburn growing up, growing up and I always would watch Auburn this season and I, I, I could see myself into their playing style. So mm-hmm. it felt good, you know, to have BP, Coach BP to call me and had a coaching staff to call me and, and things like that. And um, I just knew uh, Auburn would be a great fit. Have you got experience a funny and energetic BP yet, or have you just really experienced more of the serious? Here's, here's how we're going to recruit kind of stuff so far. Uh, I experienced, a, you know, more fun BP, you know, the more energetic BP. And uh, that's why I say I love it. I, I, I love BP, and I love that type of – I love the way he is. And, you know, I'm just going to be grateful and honored to, you know, to be, you know, be under his wing. Were there any other colleges that were really in the running for you? Like, were you considering anyone else? If so, who were some of the schools? Um, Boston College, mm-hmm. Seton Hall, uh, Ole Miss, Georgia, Florida, Florida State, Georgia Tech, um, Kansas, Kansas was an interest, um, VCU, Iowa, Texas A and M. Um, Mississippi State, uh, Murray State. Um, it just was a lot other more colleges. Um, a lot of schools was in the run, and um, like I said, I was just grateful and honored to you know just get a lot of the calls and things like that. But I just thought BP stood out the most to every school in the nation. Mm. In terms of that locker room so far, have you talked to anyone on the team yet? If so, who are some of those guys? Um, I talked to Allen. Um, Chris, Sharif, um, Cam. I, I ain't get to talk to the rest, but you know, I talked to most of the other guys. Absolutely, man. Well, a couple more things before I let you go. One of which is something you have in your bio, heavy camp. Tell you what that means and why it's there. Okay, heavy camp um is originated from Black Youngster. He's a um, rapper out there right now. Um, you know, heavy camp is, you know, you, you're not weak. Um, whoever step in front of you, you're going to show them why, you know, why you're one of the toughest dudes. And um, we always go by that. Um, it's always going to be repping worldwide. And um, I'm always going going to go by the, the name Heavy Kemp, um, no matter what. And uh, that's just, just how it is. We, we Heavy Kemp, and we're going to show people. You step in front of us, we're going to show you why we Heavy Kemp. Absolutely, man. My final thing I was like wrapping up with everyone is discussing your legacy because ultimately everyone wants to create something they're remembered for. So when you do eventually step away from the court someday, what do you want to be remembered for for what you achieve both on and off the court? Um, but when I step off the court, what I want to be, you know, chief for, I probably would say my defense, you know, and just being a you know a great person um on the court. I'm one of the, the coolest the coolest guys you'll ever meet, you know, while being on, on the court. Um, I always like, I always like, you know, when I have teammates, I always like them to feel comfortable. I, I want them to have the best, you know, the best game of, of their life. I, I always give my team, you know, confidence, my players' confidence. Even if they make bad plays, I'm gonna tell them, oh, man, it's all good, man. We're gonna get the next play. I don't care how many turnovers a, a, a person on my team got. If he got 10 turnovers, I'm gonna tell him the next play game, y'all good. Let's go. Let's, let's get this. We're gonna win this game. Don't worry about that. And I just, I think guys, you know, I, I like playing with me just, just because, you know, the way I am, 
I, I speak confidence in people. I, I only want confidence. I, I, I hate negative things said. No matter what was done, I hate negative things. I only want positive things said because with positive, positive, positive people around you, you're going to do nothing but positive things. With negative people around you, you're going to do nothing but negative things, and that's going to eat you inside and eat you alive in your head. So we being a veteran I am, I'm going to bring the positive leadership to that team. And I think the positive leadership is going to give everybody in the team confidence from the coaches to the players, to the managers, to the, to the staff, you know. So I think that's just going to be great with what I bring. Absolutely, man. Well, I definitely appreciate taking time to come on today, my man. And I look forward to seeing what I got next for you, man. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. Appreciate you. Of course. I was welcome on, man. God bless. All right, you too.